Welcome to the Semco Mama YouTube channel. For today, I thought I'll show you how I make a diaper cover. Um, I've designed this pattern myself, so I'll give a link down below where you can um, buy and download the pattern. Um, it's also available on Etsy. I'll also give the, I'll give the website link and the Etsy link. So first of all, before you start, you'll need to print out the pattern. It's in PDF format. Then you'll have to stick it together and cut it out. So I've already done that. Um, so I'll, I'll go through everything that you will need to start making your diaper cover. So you'll need your pattern, some pattern weights to put on your, to keep your fabric down. You'll either need scissors or a roller cutter. Um, you'll need some clips, a marking pen, and you'll also need um, to, uh, something to attach your snaps. You can either use uh, the, the pliers or you can use the snap press. I will be using my snap press. I'll, I'll show a pic as well of the snap press that I will be using and you'll need an awl to stick your, um, to make holes into your, um, into your fabric. Then you'll need some snaps, some waterproof, some PUL, uh, waterproof fabric um, for the outside and or the inside. You can also uh, put a polyester fabric on the outside with your waterproof fabric on the inside. I will put my waterproof fabric on the outside and then I will be using a water resistant soft shell on the inside. The reason you can also use double layered um, PUL. The reason I want to use the water resistant soft shell is this is for a client and she would like um, a more softer uh, feel on the inside and the soft shell is a bit thicker and softer so it's very nice to use um, on the inside especially where the elastics go so you don't get red marks on your baby so yes that will be what we will be using for today um, and then we can start we can start cutting our fat marking our pattern on our fabric and start cutting okay so if we look on the pattern the um the stretch of your fabric needs to, needs to go from wing to wing so it needs to go horizontal um, so if I take my PUL, this is one meter of PUL, so we just check where the stretch lies, stretch goes this way, so then I will be, just, then I'll put my pattern onto my fabric, like this. Add some pattern weights. And then, okay, then I'll just mark my, my pattern. Okay, after marking your, um, the pattern itself, we will, need, we will be marking the snap holes. Um, if you have not yet, you need to poke holes into your pattern where your snaps will be, will be going so that you can just um, mark through the pattern with your um, marker. Then you can just check to make certain you've marked all the holes. And we will also be marking the markings on the on the wing snaps. And um, this cover will be, I will be making it into an all in two. So I will also be making marks on the back side where my inserts can snap into my diaper cover. So we have a look now. Our diaper cover has been marked. And then we 
can just cut it out. I also have a pattern, a more trim pattern that's for a nappy or a um, diaper that you can also um, purchase and download. But this is the cover pattern. The, the difference between the cover pattern and my diaper pattern is the cover is wider between the legs and it's a bit longer to, so that you can use a fitted or a pre-fold um, especially all bulky night nappies underneath this. So for a more trimmer fit with inserts, you will um, it will be better to use the diaper pattern itself. Okay, so um, the cover has been cut. Um, I've also done the markings. It's not as easy to see. There you go. So, we'll put that aside for now. For the, um, then for the inner fabric, I will be using my water resistant soft shell. This stuff is so soft. Again, find your stretch. My stretch is this way. And um, this time we will not be marking the snap, this, where the snaps will be going because um, we already marked it on the outside of our diaper, of our diaper cover. We will only be marking the pattern itself. outer piece, the inner piece, and then the last bit we need is we need to back where, we, where the snaps, the tummy snaps will be going so that um, it doesn't, it doesn't pull through the fabric. So um, you can use, uh, if you have, um, if you have some offcut PUL, you can also use that. Um, what I usually just do, if I don't have a larger piece of off-cut, is I just take my pattern, put it onto my fabric, then I don't mark the entire cover, I just mark just, uh, just above the... Um, the, the, the last snap markings. You can, you can even use the half piecing line that is on your um, cover pattern. Okay. We will also be, um, we will, so we will be sticking this onto the outer POL, but we will be cutting it smaller later on. It doesn't have to be perfect because um, because we will be cutting it smaller in the end in any way. Okay, so basically you will now have three pieces. You will have your inner fabric, you will have your outer fabric, 
and then you'll have the small backing piece. So for, we'll put the inner fabric aside for now. Then you'll turn your um, outer fabric upside down. So you want the wrong side facing you, the right side that will be your outside, you will be facing down. And then you just um, put your inner fabric, oh, your um, extra piece on the inside. You can stick this with some, some, some people use glue, you can also use um, the spray adhesive. Um, I usually just add my clips. So I just add a few clips to them. I prefer not to use the adhesive spray. Um, I sometimes do use the glue, especially if I use um, two pieces of POL that I stick together, they, then the glue works great for me. But for now we'll just do the, the clips. If you don't have clips, you can also use pins. If you are using pins, uh, just pin into the seam allowance. You don't want to pin and make holes in your fabric where, um, where you can have diaper legs. So next step will be to poke your holes through the markings on the diaper that you made. You can make you can make them one one at a time or you can just work them through all at once. I usually do one row. Um, the top row will be the female snaps. Usually when you when you buy when you get the um, when you have a snap this is a snap set so you you have two caps and then this is the your female snap and that is your male snap so um, on the pattern it will show you um, there will also the female snap is also known as the socket and the male snap is also known as the stud. It will show you in your pattern which goes where with, with, with markings. So we'll start with the top row with the female snap. Okay, so what you do is you take a, the cap, put it on the, from the back side through your hole, through both fabrics, and then you add your, your socket or your female snap. So again, add your cap, add your socket, and we'll basically do that with the entire top row. sockets in my first row this is my cam press like I said you can use the pliers as well but um, I just prefer my press my husband pulled me this table so it's actually more of a it's not a foot press not a hand press anymore okay so I will be adding my snaps now great thing about this table is um, basically both hands free. I prefer to finish all my um, 
all my female snaps before I go over to my male snap because um, with the pliers you don't you don't need to um, change dies but with the with the press you need to change the dies snaps so I'll the next I'll need to I will be um, changing my dies now to the male snaps or the stud process is exactly the same add your add your cap add your stud and then just um, snap it down or push it down so I'll quickly finish all these snaps and then I'll show you what it looks like so um, okay so all of our snaps have been added to our diaper now we have our sockets our studs more sockets for the snap down uh, rise and then two studs for the, those sockets to get, go into so the next step is i'll first be taking off my clips now i will be cutting the the backing piece smaller so that it's not in my seam allowance and thicken up my seam allowance unnecessarily. <laughs> okay. So now that I've backed my um now that I've got, that I've cut my backing smaller I will flip, I'm flipping over my front piece and then I will be adding my inner fabric and I will be putting them right side to right side so my um, wrong sides will be on the outside because I will be turn and turning and top stitching this pattern. Okay, so I've, I've clipped, opened my, um, my two pieces, my front and back pieces together. Next step, we will be stitching them together. Um, you'll see this piece, the same on the pattern, this piece that sticks out. This is your opening. This is where your opening is for your turning. So we'll start over here and then we'll sew all around and stop here. So this piece we will not be sewing so that we can turn it inside out. Okay, so next up we'll be moving over, we'll now be moving over to the sewing machine. Okay, um, I will be sewing the front and the back pieces together now. I switched off the light of my sewing machine um, so it's easier for you guys to see. Um, I'm using my Jack walking foot. This is my usual machine I use to sew my diapers. Um, but you can use um, any any sewing machine to sew your diapers. Okay, so the seam, seam allowance is one centimeter or is it three eighths of an inch? I can't remember, it will be in the pattern. Um, or the half an inch, I can't remember the inches exactly now. Um, so 
So we start going front, we're going forward, a few stitches backward, and then we sew all the way to the first edge. Okay. Put, um, let your, um, put your needle in the downwards position, then you can turn your diaper. And then you can sew the next piece. This is four if you do corners. Okay. Now just keep on sewing all the way around, keeping that one centimeter seam allowance. Um, if you are doing round edges and not corners or some of them round edges just go slowly push your fabric into your needle until you get to a straight piece again get into a corner again just turning usually sew with my POL on the top with the, um, the sticky side on top um, because I'm using my walking foot I don't have issues with it sliding around you get a walking foot attachment for your domestic machine that you can also use I used to sew like that until I got my um, industrial machine um, otherwise if you don't have a walking foot I'd say that you um, you rather sew on the side of fabric that's not slippery or sticky. Um, if you are doing double layer POL, um, you can always, if you don't have the uh, walking foot, you can just um, stick some sticky tape or clear tape, uh, we call it um, cellar tape in South Africa, um, on your foot, and then that will help that your um, needle won't skip stitches um, and also um, remember to use a straight stitch or a ballpoint oh, stretch needle or a ballpoint needle in your machine so we are getting to the um, we are getting to the end of it so you'll see I'm leaving that piece um, open for turning and top stitching so when I get to here I will just go backwards a few stitches again, frontwards, and then again, I'm just locking the stitch and I'm taking it out of my I'm taking my fabric out of my machine. So now that I've sewn, I've sewn now all the it all the way around so they are stitched, they are now st stuck together. For the next step we will be marking our elastic markings um, so you'll need your um, your pattern again for that okay, so all you do is just attach just put your pattern onto your diaper and then you just mark where the elastic markings, markings is. You'll see the elastic markings is um, the small box on your pattern. I'm just going to mark all my elastic markings. Okay. 
thin just like scissors and um, cut where your elastic will be don't cut through the um, through the stitches otherwise it will unravel there so I'm now just cutting all the marks so we're just cutting in the seam allowance not cutting through the stitches the next step we will cut all the if you have corners you will cut all your corners So now the next step is to, um, we want to cut our seam allowance short, um, more trim, um, but we don't want to cut it, uh, cut the pieces where the elastic markings be because we want the full seam allowance staying there. So um, there's two ways you can do it. With just the straight pieces, you can just cut it smaller. It's basically like an eighth of an inch left there. Um, and then when there's round parts you want to cut it smaller but you also want to snip into them so that when they turn they are more they, 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 they um, are more round for the um, I, I usually just use my pinking shears they um, make a prettier easier way for me to do it that way I just want to cut this bit smaller here. Yeah. So and then I just cut my seam allowance smaller. This will be make a neater diaper when you turn it. If you leave it, you'll see that your corners and your um, rounds your edges don't lay smooth and flat okay so we've i've cut all the seam allowance um, as you can see where my the the um, spaces between my elastic markings, I still left the full seam allowance, and um, you guys will see now when we turn it why I do it that way. Okay, so basically you can now just put your hand on the inside and turn your diaper cover through the turning wall. You can just take a blunt object. Um, you can use a thin crochet hook. I just use my. I sometimes just use my tweezers, it's, um, whichever is the closest one. And then you just poke your. Um, if you if you have corners, you just poke your corners out so that they look nice and crisp. So, the next step is we will now be doing the case casings for the elastic. Um, some people sew their elastic in the seam allowance. I prefer to do casings and just thread my elastic through. I found with this way it's easier if your elastics become um, relaxed and you want to 
um, put in new elastic and um, I find it it's a neater look for me and I need to foster so as well so um, for the next step because you trimmed your seam allowance smaller and um, left it between the um, elastic markings full full uh, full seam allowance you will be able to feel where your seam allowance starts again now that's the start where your elastic casings will be so just add a pin or a clip there and a clip this side as well and what you do now is basically you just roll it with your fingers to get a more nice smooth look so basically you want your um, you don't want your inner fabric to stick to the outside and you don't want your outer fabric to roll to the inside you want to get a nice balance with them there and just put in a few clips to keep it nice and flat and in place and then you can do that as well with the back elastic as well as with the all the um, the elastic place uh, the way the elastic casing should be we can um, start sewing in the elastic casings I usually make my casings about 1.5 centimeters it depends on the the um, on the elastic you use the elastic I'm using is um, 0 0.8 centimeters so I found that that way it still has a lot of movement inside and it gives a nice softer feel around the legs so I just go forwards and backwards to to lock the stitch and then I go all the way around not, not, not all the way around I go to where my um, seam allowance stops you can make markings on the outside as well i just find it easier and faster to do it this way if it's um, still difficult for you to feel where the markings is you can just mark them on the outside as well you can even mark them there already when you um when you mark your um pattern onto your fabric in the store before cutting them as well so Doing the back elastic same again feel where your seam allowance start go forwards and backwards to block your stitch so at a 1.5 centimeter uh, so a 1.5 centimeter casing and go all the way until you feel that your um, seam allowance has stopped Okay, so you should now have three um, casings for your elastic, one in the back and two at the legs. Um, next step, we will be threading the um, elastic through the casing. Okay, what you will now need is a botkin. You can also use a safety pin, um, a safety pin, a hair, club, uh, a hair pin, anything to case your uh, to thread your elastic through your through your casing um, for your elastic in the pattern you will get the measurements for the elastic or you can do it um, the same way I will be doing it um, I'm, the easiest way for me is to just thread it through on my roll and um, then I then I cut it 
um, I will be let me just roll some off here okay so so I put my hand into the um, opening I, I, I prefer to start with the back casing and then I just thread my bodkin through there until it comes out on the other side make sure that your elastic does not roll on the inside that it stays nice and flat So then the next step will be to just feel where that elastic is. Get, make sure your bodkin is out of the way and um, where your casing starts. You can just sew forwards, backwards and I do this about three to four times Then I take it out of the take my um, thread out and just cut it off and then what I do is I pull my um, elastic as tight as possible and I keep my hand at the end of the casing and then I just pull it until it straightens up and then I usually give another pull again just straighten it up again. So if it's if you can if you, you keep the elastic um, with this hand, pull it straight, and you'll get a nice, nice even stretch there without it being too tight. Okay, and then this, I just put my um, tight underneath the um, needle again. Well, um, I keep my finger on the elastic on the inside. I go forwards and backwards a few times. Then I just pull my elastic um, tight. Cut it off. Take my bodkin out on the other side and then I have my back elastic. Now I will be doing the same with the leg elastics as well. So let me show you it one more time. So I add my, my elastic through my bodkin. Thread it through my elastic casing until it comes out on the other side and I just make sure my bodkin is out of the way and I close it up there so that my um, elastic stays in place Again, I will just tighten my elastic as tight as I can, hold it with my thumb and my forefinger, then I will pull so that it straightens out. And I'll do it again, straighten it out again. Just close it up. Make sure to keep your elastic down with your finger so that it doesn't slip out. Right, there 
regler, one regel er stikt an. My back elastic, leg elastic, another leg elastic. The next step will be to I will be top stitching um, all around and cl also be closing the um, turning all at the same time. So again, I just roll my um, I roll my front and my back to get a nice smoother, crispier look. Night. Clip them to keep them in place. Now I'll just be doing this going all the way around. Okay, to um, close the turning wall. You can just um, tap, uh, uh, tuck those um, tabs in for the turning wall so that it lies fat and straight. And then I just put some clips to keep them closed. Now we will be top stitching. Um, I usually um, adjust my machine for a longer stitch length and then um, I top stitch rather close to the edge but still um, I think it's about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Forwards, backwards, and then I just go all the way around, taking out my clips as I go. You come to a corner, keep your needle down, turn, and stitch again. When I come to another where the elastic starts, I lock my, lock my stitches, take out my work, cut, neaten up my um, threads, and then I start again. And 
there we go now all we have to do now is just um, insert the wing snaps and the back snaps and the cover will be all done so I'll be going over now to my snap press again okay so for to finish off the dipole the nappy cover we just need to add the wing snaps and the back snaps so it's it, it's exactly the same the markings we already made the markings at the beginning so you just push your um push your holes through your diaper um insert your snaps just make certain that you um, add the right snaps at the right places and this time we will be adding the cap to the front and the stud or the socket at the on the inside of the diaper again I will um, first do um, this time I will first do all the male snaps and then I'll do the female snaps because my male um, die was already in in my press the crossover snaps you have to do the other way around you put your cap on the inside and your stud or socket on the outside I'll just change the die to the female die if you are using your um, if you're using the pliers you won't have to um, change between dies and so I'll just finish off with my female snaps and there our diaper cover is all done it's nice and soft on the inside with the with the soft shell and we have the PUL on the outside we have snap down rise snaps at the back if you want to add inserts and there you have a diaper cover it's a, lot, it's a very spacious diaper cover with lots of space thanks guys remember to click the subscribe button for more tutorials to follow